I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 333. It is our post-WrestleMania show. It is the first week of April of 2023. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we say this every week, but we have so much to talk about. That's right. Uh, perhaps more than ever before, and so much we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. Hey, so WWE is being sold to uh, Endeavor. Yeah. Being merged with UFC into a new company. Well, I guess at least it wasn't the Saudi public fund. <laughs> yeah, I would hate for some uh, less than savory characters to be involved in this. <laughs> in this transaction. No, it is, uh, I guess, I on that, on that, if we're grading on a curve, it is better than uh, than the Saudi government owning the company outright. Uh, so yeah, uh, <laughs> Dana Dana White and Vince McMahon working working in uh, conjoining cu- cubicles. I have to imagine for the first time since he was a uh, a plastic cup salesman <laughs> and a dump truck driver. Vince McMahon has a boss. Ari Emanuel is. Vince McMahon's boss. Mm-hmm. Interesting. We generally, and... as I say, we generally don't see. Uh... Yeah, we just have never seen Vince have to uh, answer to anyone. And judging by his appearance on CNBC this week with Ari Emanuel, uh, that will continue. <laughs> he does not have to answer to Ari. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't seem like Ari's uh, particularly interested in the uh, in the minutia of the day to day. I don't think <laughs> I don't think Ari's going to be calling up to uh, to ask what Vince is booking for SummerSlam. Well, we still have two nights of WrestleMania to talk about, but uh, we'll get there. But Vince McMahon is back. Vince McMahon had an office at WrestleMania. Vince McMahon <laughs> was on the headsets at WrestleMania. And uh, judging by the finish to night two of WrestleMania, Vince McMahon was back booking at WrestleMania. And then Monday Night Raw was one of the more Vince McMahon shows you'll ever see in your entire life. <laughs> a lot of changes made last minute. A lot of changes made during the show, apparently. <laughs> As uh, people that were there live can attest to. Um, yeah, it's he's back. He's back. He has a creepy little mustache and he has faced no consequences for all of the things that he has done. What a what a heartwarming start. <laughs> what a heartwarming story to start a show this week. Well, that's we always have we have always learned um that lesson. It's just that the more money you have, the uh, the fewer consequences you face. And mm-hmm. The most you can hope for is that they are moderately embarrassed. <laughs> As we have seen with the world's richest man buying Twitter in uh, over the last six months. <laughs> That's the only come up it's people like that ever really face is they get moderately embarrassed online. <laughs> Great. All right. Uh, we can touch on WrestleMania here. Uh, night one, I thought was one of the better shows in the history of the company. What did you think? Yeah, that was fantastic. I kind of watched it in two sittings. I was out and then uh, I got back in time for the I guess I came in at the the Dominic and Ray match and uh, watched the rest of it live. Really enjoyed it. And then uh, the next morning went back and watched the uh, the first half of the show. And I thought most of that was pretty good. Didn't really care much for the the John Cena match. But hey, (laughs) who knows what John Cena's. (laughs) contractually allowed to do in a wrestling ring at this point um but yeah overall thought it was a very very strong show crowd was felt like there was a lot of life to it felt like everybody was working really really hard and 
trying their best and they created some some really memorable stuff and it was it was it was no nobody and nobody ever will do the big spectacle wrestling show like the world wrestling federation and it was it was all of that it felt big it had the big production values you had big time main event matches and uh, at least on the saturday show a lot of like happy endings and and good good wrestling leading to satisfying payoffs so yeah night one of wrestlemania two thumbs up for me stage looked amazing mm-hmm. absolutely incredible yeah building looked really Austin cool Theory with, like, that, that clear that clear roof or whatever really really neat looking building yeah so if i is uh yeah and uh, we pour one out for those that died building that stadium because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. people died building the stadium. It's unbelievable. Austin Theory beat John Cena. John Cena uh, took about 56 more bumps than I thought he would. Mm-hmm. Took a vertical suplex. <laughs> uh, didn't, was not exactly like a strong put over for Mr. Theory. He got tap. He tapped out behind the ref's back, and then had to hit a low blow to win. Yeah, I don't know. I still would have uh, had John win this. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, who cares about the U.S. title? <laughs> yeah, just let John take it and wear it to movie premieres. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Street Profits won the uh, four way tag team match. Fun little eight minute match there. Seth Rollins beat Logan Paul about as good of a celebrity match as you could imagine. Logan Paul is real good. What'd you think of that one? Yeah, it was, it was good. I think it was about what I expected though. (laughs) I have to say like, I think, uh, which is to Logan Paul's credit that he's that good for his level of experience. But now that we have kind of seen the Logan Paul match a couple times. I expected that he and Seth would have a very good match, and uh, and they did. And we got a lovely bit of, as was the theme of this show, other than uh, some of the other things we've talked about already, uh, a lot of just wonderful brand partnerships and sponsorships uh, all over this show. And so we got Logan Paul doing spots with a guy in his energy drink mascot costume, and isn't that just lovely? Yes. Love brands. Love when brands synergize and Mm -hmm. when they promote each other. Yes. Uh, This this show is also brought to you by Intuit TurboTax. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trish Lita and Becky beat Damage Control. No idea what's going on with Bailey here. (laughs) Bailey tweeted like goodbye after the after the show, and then was apparently scheduled for raw and then pulled from raw. I don't know what's going on with Bailey here, but uh, Trish, Lita, Becky, um, they got a lot of time. They got almost 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, Trish did the stratosphere off the post to the floor. Pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, so much better than, than Lita did in the ring. <laughs> I will say, because I had heard from you and some of the other wrestling twitter all-stars that lita was like moving like (laughs) i don't know like one of the hardy boys present day yeah and i went in and so when i watched it I was like it's not so bad like she could still do her signature stuff looks okay uh it's just like which every time she had to run and you're like ah and i was and then i thought oh yeah just exactly like the hardy boys (laughs) for the most part or at least jeff hardy the last few times we saw him in the ring, it's like, oh, he could still, he, she could still do like uh, the the Hurricane Rana and 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 when the Twist of Fate or whatever. It's just like they had her every time she had to run. It was uh, did not look pretty or comfortable for her. <laughs> yeah, maybe she should. Uh, when somebody goes to shoot her off, she should all just always do the reversal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, do play play Hogan in there. Let 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 the youngsters run to you. <laughs> and you throw a big right hand and they bump like crazy for you. That's probably how I would have set up that hot tag rather than her having to run to the opposing corner to start <laughs> to start grabbing people. I don't know. Yeah, like I said, it was uh it was it was a fun little match and uh yeah, and and the good guys won. No no execution of the secret plan of Tristratus turning mm-hmm. heel yet, but there's still time. Mm-hmm. They hinted at it a little bit there. 
They hinted at it on Monday. They hinted at it in uh, the post match celebration a little bit on uh, on Saturday there. So there's still time for the secret plan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ray beat Dominic. Fun bit of child abuse here. <laughs> Brought to you by Cinnamon Toast Crunch. <laughs> Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Uh, yeah, this match was so, so fun. This was uh, a lot of fun. I thought Dominic was going to win for sure. But they put Ray over and uh, you got Bad Bunny involved, which obviously is leading to stuff at the next show. Uh, Yeah, I just thought the way it was constructed where, as we've discussed, Judgment Day is all over these shows. And like a lot of groups, the finishes to their matches are similar because it's always the other guy, whoever's not wrestling, runs in and distracts the ref. And then the third guy beats up the, the the opponent and then the first guy wins. So they tease doing that, but then the baby face triumphed and, and won anyway. So I, I approve of that. And, and uh, it was good. Good weekend for Ray getting the hall of fame, uh, Conan getting himself a job, probably if he wants it <laughs> with that hall of fame speech and then, uh, and then getting, getting a big win at WrestleMania. Like, I feel like I, well, I was going to say other than the world, ti- the world title win, which is, a big deal, but it's been a long time since I feel like Ray's had like a signature WrestleMania thing to do. So it was fun to see, fun to see him, you know, get a moment. Who knows how many more of those he'll get now that Vince is back in power. Rhea Ripley beat Charlotte Flair in the, well, this is kind of the semi-main position. There was a bit of a segment slash match after, but Mm -hmm. These guys worked like they were mad that they weren't the WrestleMania main <laughs> event. They had a hell of a match. Yeah, it picked up. I did not love this the way other people did. Um, I thought they were kind of off, uh, a little bit off. They were not on the same page and were kind of struggling to get into position on some stuff in the first half. But then in the second half when it was just them hitting each other really hard and kicking out of finishers, it was awesome. So yeah, I would still say a, a very good match. I saw some, I saw, I think Dave said it was like one of the best women's matches in WWE history. I don't think I would go down that road, but again, I, I still think it was good. Just, I, like I said, I wasn't perhaps as in love with it as a lot of, uh, a lot of other folks were. And Charlotte had a big smile on her face after the match, which depending on, <laughs> what sort of agendas you might have. You can either interpret that as her just being proud of the match she had, her trying to recreate Sasha Banks' look after she put over Bianca a couple of years ago, or her trying to emulate Paul Levesque and just let you know that the the loss doesn't matter. So you can, you could pick which one it was. I would like to point out when Sasha Banks was doing that a couple of years ago, the camera was not on her. It was like fan cam stuff mm-hmm. that that caught her after doing that, smiling at Bianca Belair after the show. Yeah, like, the, the WWE cameras were not getting close ups of her <laughs> doing it like they were with Charlotte here, but laughing off the victory. <laughs> Charlotte taking another leave of absence. Mm-hmm. She came, she came back in December. It's four months later. Mm-hmm. She's gone again. Factual. Just going to say something factual. She's dropped a lot of weight. She's yep. in very, very good shape. Um, and so she wants to do a bodybuilding competition. Yeah, so maybe maybe that's what the time off for is. Maybe she's just gonna just hardcore diet. And I don't I don't know how she could possibly get any leaner, but perhaps that's the uh that's the goal. So maybe she's going off to train for that. Also celebrated a birthday this week. And if you're into family planning, uh maybe now's the time. Hmm. Yeah, good point. Uh, Pat McAfee beat The Miz. I don't know if there was a lot to say about this. I hated it, but Michael Cole <laughs> seemed to be having a good time. So that's nice. Sure. Main event, Kevin and Sammy beat The Usos uh, in a uh, tag team title match. The Usos have fallen. And uh, Kevin and Sammy, Kevin main events WrestleMania for the uh, second consecutive year. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sammy Zayn defeats the Usos with uh, about five Haluva kicks. And uh, I really enjoyed this. What do you think? 
Yeah, it was awesome. It was very, uh, very well paced. It was an interest. It went very long. So it's one of those tag matches where you get the heat and the hot tag like four different times. Right. Um, and I think we all knew the finish had to be Sammy pinning Jay. So like you're so I wasn't really I, I don't want to it's not a critique, but it's just one of those things where it's like, oh, Kevin hits the stummer on Jimmy. You're like, well, that's not the finish because it's got to be whatever they do. It's got to be Jay and Sammy in the ring at the end. So but they would got the big moment there with, the you know, with Sammy hitting all the Huluva kicks, as you said, and got the big win. And yeah, it's pretty there. Those two guys story is is pretty nuts. And a lot of people told them to stop doing <laughs> what got them over in various companies. And uh, now Kevin's main event to two WrestleManias and Sammy's main event to his first. So fun, feel good moment to end the show. Again, one of the all-time great matches in the or all-time great shows in WWE history. Mm -hmm. Night one there. Night two, Brock Lesnar beat Omos. They went less than five minutes. This rules. It was awesome. It was it was like it was just a modern version of a 1986 WWF muscle man versus giant match, and it was awesome. Place went banana for a bear hug. No, like you said, once in a while, the old <laughs> the old ways still work. The old man still <laughs> maybe has an idea of what people want to see once in a while. Yeah, uh, women's four way tag match: uh, Ronda and Shayna beat everybody else, and then so naturally the next night on Raw, um, Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez won a number one contenders match for the tag team titles. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Sure, why not? Gunther beat Sheamus and Drew to retain the Intercontinental Championship. They had played up like Sheamus is the only title he hasn't won is the IC title. And so for that reason, I kind of thought Sheamus is going to keep it, but they appear to be making uh, Gunther the uh, the most uh, dominant Intercontinental Champion of all time, and he's going to break the Hoggy Talk Man's record. So there's that. Yeah, an awesome, awesome match. Um, just just three dudes killing each other, <laughs> and it was awesome. And uh, yeah, I thought, based on like we talked about, that I thought Sheamus could pin Drew here. Um, mostly because I feel like, and I guess there was some contract news that broke about Drew over this past week. Um, about His that. contract's up at the end of the year, and they haven't been able to reach a new deal yet right so. which is it's not an immediate thing it's not like he's out the door tomorrow even if he was going to leave but usually if if they know if they think you aren't coming back they're going to start beating you on your way out and so i just thought it going into that match that night i was like oh yeah Sheamus is definitely pin and drew here and they didn't do that so i don't know i don't uh like you said there's it was more about building, continuing to build Gunther than it was about giving giving Sheamus his moment for now. Bianca Belair defeated Asuka to retain the Raw Women's title. Bianca's been champion for over a year now. And uh, I was a little bit surprised just because probably maybe we should try to tell some different stories here with Bianca and have her chase for a little while, but I don't think it's a terrible result or anything. Yeah, and I, I guess based on what they did the next night, maybe this is because they're they're unifying these belts soon, so maybe somebody else is going to beat Bianca. Um, but or at least they've teased that they might unify them at some point. So, um, but yeah, I I certainly thought that uh, Asuka should could and maybe should win, but um, I also Bianca's incredible. She had a one of the coolest entrances I've ever seen. <laughs> And uh, and like we said last week, uh, she continued her trend of having a very good match uh, despite lackluster buildup to said match. So uh, she always delivers in the ring. So I think I don't I don't blame them for wanting to just, you know, keep the train rolling, so to speak. So at this point, we're still uh, we're having a great show. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then it, it gets kicked up another notch. <laughs> Shane McMahon makes a surprise return mm -hmm. as Snoop Dogg and the Miz are out there doing some host and dog father of WrestleMania shtick. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Shane McMahon returns. He gets blown up doing his uh, Shane McMahon dance mm-hmm. on the way to the ring. Mm-hmm. He cuts a short promo where he's huffing and puffing the entire time. By the way, he's absolutely jacked to the gills. Mm-hmm. Biggest I've ever seen him. Yep. Yep. So uh, they make an impromptu match between Shane McMahon and uh, and The Miz. The second time they fought at WrestleMania, by the way. Huh. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. And uh, and then uh, do you want to do you want to take care? What happened here? <laughs> do you? So uh, yeah, Shane threw about ten seconds of the worst punches of all time. Yeah. And then uh, Miz went off the ropes. Yeah, he shoots Miz off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shane does does a leapfrog. You know, showing off that great athletic prowess that he's known for. It was a great leapfrog. Mm-hmm. But he comes down and uh, he doesn't get back up. <laughs> and time stands still as we see him, as we see Miz freeze like a deer in the headlights. We see Shane just kind of like seizing on the mat. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and all of a sudden the refs are in the ring. And then about 10 seconds later, Snoop Dogg gets in the ring and punches Miz <laughs> Punches Miz in the face, and then uh, decides that he is now in this match, and yeah. punches Miz again, gives him the people's elbow, and pins him, and uh, and we never saw Shane McMahon again, <laughs> because as it turns out, when he did his leapfrog to show out his tremendous athletic prowess that he's known for, uh, he he immediately tore his quad. <laughs> I laughed and laughed. <laughs> it's just as we as we know the la- when last we saw Shane McMahon, uh, he was fired <laughs> for mucking up the Royal Rumble in 2022, and uh, and was apparently at the time it was said by his father that he will never ever get another pop in his company as long as he lives. Yes. And uh, so, uh, you know, a year plus later, he finally works his way back into the good graces. You know, they need a surprise. They call Shane O'Mac. He gets his moment. He's like a little, he seemed like genuinely touched by the crowd reaction. And then he turns red as a stop sign and then <laughs> immediately <laughs> screws it up. And was, it's just here- amazing. Yeah, here's another one. Here's another one that mm-hmm. uh, you, you a feather for your cap. Mm-hmm. Uh, you immediately said he blew out his quad. I did, <laughs> and I was like, "Nah, I think it was his knee or <laughs> something, or he broke his leg or yeah, whatever." And you're like, "Nah, he blew out his quad." <laughs> and uh, turns out, yeah, he blew out his quad. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know, it's it's a family, <laughs> it's a family injury. Um, yeah. and uh, unlike yeah, unlike his father, though, he did not sit up immediately and start yelling at people, he just laid there on the ground <laughs> and waited for yeah. doctors to carry him out of the ring. And then there was like little fan cam video of him <laughs> pitifully w- limping up the ramp. They didn't even get him a cart, <laughs> they made him walk all the way back <laughs> up that ramp. <laughs> oh, that, that had to suck. The ultimate fail, son. He has submitted you know, himself. It was the last time we ever saw Shane McMahon. Mm-hmm. There was no mention of his, uh, you know, there's no like well wishes to him or mention of his injury. It's just they cut away from him. Snoop Dogg's in the ring. And all of a sudden it's Snoop, De- Snoop Dogg's moment. Yeah. Edge beat Finn Balor in a Hell in a Cell match. That uh, there was a lengthy pause while they stapled Finn Balor's head back mm-hmm. together in the ring. Um, I don't know. I thought it was okay. It, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Brood Edge, by the way, to correct you, it was Brood Edge. It said so on his Titan Tron. Um, yeah, okay. it, w- it wasn't very good, uh, but it wasn't very bad. Uh, I yeah, did think but- it, w- it was really funny when uh, they are stopping the match because Finn uh, has a wound and is bleeding. And he was bleeding a lot by all accounts. Uh, and we, I mean, you can see the mat. It was, it bled quickly. So I don't, I don't fault them for stopping the match, making sure he was okay. But it is very funny because 
while Edge is just kind of impotently standing around making mean faces while they're tending to Finn, the demon, the scary demon man. Uh, the announcers are talking about how oh, the demon is invincible. Edge has barely been able to have a scra- barely is able to stop him for even a second. He's in, he's in, he's incredible. He's so terrifying. Meanwhile, he is on the ground being tended to because he got a boo-boo. Yes. And I think that's very funny. And I'm not, I'm not going to launch into my speech about how you need blood to make cage matches. Good. I think I've made that speech before. I don't need to make it again. And again, this was not a, a little cut. He had a lot of staples in his head. It was a deep wound. I don't blame them for checking him. I'm not saying it was bad that they did, but it was just humorous in the moment to have the announcers yelling and ranting and raving about how dangerous and invincible the demon is while uh, he was on the ground and edge was just kind of standing there making, making mean faces. Yep. And then the, uh, the main event, uh, Roman Reigns beat Cody Rhodes. (laughs) Sure did. This was uh, a really good match with uh, really bad booking. Yeah, I uh, I tend to agree. Crowd was on fire. Keeping in mind, this is the last match of yeah. the second four hour show that these people had sat in. <laughs> yeah. Three and a half hour show. They were still white hot for it. They were into it. They bought on all. They bid on all the near falls. The you know the solo comes out and interferes a few times. He gets thrown out. And of course, you're going, well, the Usos are going to run in. And the Usos run in, and Sammy and Kevin make their triumphant return and run off the Usos. Plus, Sammy and Kevin get like a little bonus revenge on Roman as well, kind of tying the knot on that story, theoretically. Uh, And then they all all F off. And it's Cody in the ring. He's going to do his his three crossroads in a row, leading to the finish. And then Solus Koa just came back out and hit him with his thumb. And then Roman Reigns speared him. Paul Heyman got on the apron. Yeah. And uh, distracted the referee while Solo Sokoa ran back in, mm-hmm. hit the Samoan spike, and uh, Roman pins Cody Rhodes. Yep. Made Roman got... to get his finish first, though. Yeah. Another, another man who's st- stayed under the Paul Levesque learning tree. You could do your gaga and run ins and BS, but you got to end it with the finisher. Yeah. I um I got real mad at this. I have not gotten real mad at the WWF in a long time. I didn't know I still could, if I'm honest. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But uh, why would you ever, ever believe in a WWE babyface again? Mm-hmm. So like, it's one thing. They kind of did this to you uh, eight months ago with Drew McIntyre mm-hmm. uh, in his uh, on his home continent. Yeah. Um, they kind of did the same thing uh, about five weeks ago with Sami Zayn in his in his mm-hmm. home country in his sure hometown, did. but um, those did not feel like this. Like mm-hmm. I didn't expect either of those guys to win. I did expect uh, Cody Rhodes to win, and now uh, and now uh, Cody Rhodes is feuding with Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hey, you know, Brock Brock only fused with top guys. It's not it's not it's not bad that Cody and Brock are feuding, but wouldn't it be better if it were like for the title? Yeah, if Cody had won the night before and like yeah. was coming off a big triumphant moment and then got laid out by Brock as opposed yeah. to getting beat up and losing at WrestleMania and then getting beat up again the next night kind of makes him look like a loser, doesn't it? Sure does. Loser with no friends because nobody came out to help him. Correct. The final eight minutes of Raw this week um, were Brock Lesnar beating Cody Rhodes all around the arena. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's not an exaggeration. Eight minutes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, it's, it's just un- unbelievable. So Brock Lesnar, I guess, is not retiring. I guess he signed a new contract. <laughs> And uh, and there's that. So that uh, that was WrestleMania. Everybody Raw after Mania, they uh, they didn't really do anything besides having <laughs> Brock kill Cody Rhodes. Yeah, they shot their one big angle. As mentioned, they kind of teased. They did a Rhea Ripley Bianca face off, which is 
where they tease that maybe someday they're going to unify these titles or yeah or whatever but nothing nothing really concrete oh and they set up the the bad bunny tag for the puerto rico show yes yes good point yes uh nxt stand deliver did you watch it spoiler alert no i did not <laughs> I watched a lot of wrestling this weekend, but I was, uh, I was, uh, I just, I just kind of went on living my life. All right. right. I heard they, they, they pulled the trigger on the big brawn turn though. Right. On uh, NXT television. This ah, season. yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Carmelo Hayes uh, won the NXT title. Um, not unexpected. I think mm-hmm. Braun turning heel on him. They kind of did a double turn. Uh, on the television this week it's a good angle by the way Uh, nxt television this week was a good show um probably a little bit unexpected but uh i don't know i don't know what's going on as far as i don't think anybody's getting called up (laughs) i don't think anybody Mm -hmm. new is coming in um i don't know if there's a officially a hiring freeze or what the deal is but i think it's just holding pattern as far as additions to the main roster or guys moving from NXT to the main roster, we'll see. Um, Indy Hartwell won the women's title. That was a bit of a surprise. Only because I thought she was endangered. <laughs> uh, and uh, they went ahead and, and put the title on her. Uh, crowd down at the uh, Performance Center loves her. So uh, that's great. John Gargano won on that show. And uh, there's a fun five wire. So all that was fun. And there was a great Ring of Honor pay-per-view with some very bad booking on <laughs> Friday. Speaking uh, of baby faces that should have won that didn't. Yeah, Mark Briscoe lost to Samoa Joe. And uh, I don't really care about Eddie Kingston, but Eddie Kingston lost to uh, Claudia Casting. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't I don't I don't care that Eddie Kingston didn't win the ROH title because that doesn't feel like an important story to me. <laughs> Yes. Um, and I don't you can do a trilogy of matches with him and Claudio and maybe build up to a point where I would care about that. But I that that in a bubble is not a bad, bad decision. But doing it on the same show where you had this incredibly emotional match with Mark Briscoe, you know, doing like he he at one point goes to the corner to look for a tag that isn't there, and then he gets like a surge of spiritual energy. And yep. makes his comeback on Joe. It was awesome. It was a very, very good match. Uh, the show overall was a very good show. But yes, Mark Briscoe should have won. And as we just spoke about with Cody, you can you can build to a rematch eventually. But sometimes the right time is just the right time. And when you try to hold out for one more show, for one more round of heat before you give them the payoff, sometimes you're going to just miss the peak and you're going to pick the wrong moment. So... We'll see about this Mark Briscoe one, but I can't really imagine a better time to pull the trigger on it than his first big match after his brother's passing on an ROH show in front of a, you know, a big crowd. I don't know. I don't know. Just it was the time. It was the right time to do it. And uh, but, uh, you know, we just we just got some real galaxy brain bookers in uh, in the two in in the big uh, in the big wrestling companies these days. And, and, and they know best, don't they? Sure. AEW this week announced a Wembley Stadium show. Not sure if it's a pay-per-view. Not sure if it's going to be a TV special. They kind of tried to... It was severely underexplained, as with all things in AEW. They're going to London at the end of August. Mm-hmm. Jay White signed. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, yeah, that's what's going on with AEW. MJF had a, uh, did a wonderful variety <laughs> show. <laughs> What did you think of uh, Dynamite this week? I I was not enamored with this show. I did not think it was a particularly good show at all. Um, uh, yeah, I mean the Jay White uh, debut was was fun and somewhat surprising because it felt like up until maybe a week ago, <laughs> uh, it was all but a foregone conclusion that he was headed to WWE again. I think, as you just mentioned, whether it's an official policy or not i would imagine the company is not looking to hire new people right now and maybe and certainly not looking to pay them big money in any case so it could be part of that i know there was a fight full report that said that wwe 
thought he was coming in, but also acknowledged that the higher ups in the company did not communicate well to him or something like that. I forget the exact wording, but um, you know, I don't, I don't know that Jay White in AEW is like a great fit. Cause I don't know if he'll, if he'll crack into those like 10 or so people in AEW that get utilized on dynamite every single week, or if he'll just end up as one of the other 50 people on the roster that show up for, for four weeks and then disappear for three months and, and all of that. But um, on the plus side, I don't have to watch him get into a feud with Miz or LA Knight. So I am thankful for that. So far, he's just Robinson's friend mm-hmm. in AEW. They're doing, so they're doing a bullet club thing. The hottest, Ugh. most relevant faction, the bullet club. Churches. So that was a W and we can kind of wrap up with our hodgepodge potpourri of WrestleMania weekend activities. Uh, you watched Kota Ibushi's matches this weekend. What did you think? They were, they were Kota Ibushi matches. They were, no, they were good. Um, the, I, I think this is the first blood sport show I ever watched. Yeah. Um, I don't, I wouldn't run out of my way to watch more. Like it's it's a cute concept. Um it's but it, always always good when you refer to something called blood sport as cute. <laughs> <laughs> like I like I, like and I get why it works for some people. Like um I also watched uh from that show Marina Shafir and Killer Kelly had a match. Yeah. Um and it's like okay I could see why this works better for someone like Marina Shafir who is a real you know or was a real MMA fighter and you know can she could basically do an entire match of just grappling and it hey it's better than any match I've ever seen her have on Dynamite yeah. um but uh, but yeah for for a Kota Ibushi match like him and Mike Bailey I would imagine could have a just a really good regular wrestling match yeah but also, they're like getting in the mount, and there's no ropes, and <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't great. And then yes, the the main event of the Joey Janela Spring Break show was was Janela versus Ibushi, and they had a you know a, a they they attempted to have like the the strong style New Japan singles match, and it was a very good match. Um, nothing earth shattering, but uh, but a, but a very very good match. So uh, he's back. I don't know what he's going to be doing. I don't know if he knows what he's going to be doing. I don't know if he he may have just he may have just gotten lost in Los Angeles somewhere after the show. <laughs> Who knows? <Yes. laughs> he may be a vagabond at this point. Uh, we may never see him again. But no, it's it's good that he's back. But uh, who knows? It's just it is pretty wild that after you know nearly two years, he just pops up on a couple random indie shows WrestleMania weekend in in L.A. and you know who who knows where who knows where he'll pop up next i guess i only saw still photographs of mr bushi mm-hmm. and he looked smaller to me still ridiculously cut and everything mm-hmm. for being 40 years old or whatever but is that a fair assessment yeah i think he definitely looked like he lost some some mass and uh, was uh, he looked pale to me <laughs> sure maybe just not you know just not spending a lot of time in a in I mean not that he was like he wasn't bronze before but um, right. yeah, he just looked you just yeah he just looked like a guy who hadn't been you know in public with his shirt off you know in a while <laughs> which sure. is, which is fine uh, or outside with his shirt off in a while so um, but yeah he you know, otherwise co- cosmetically he looked fine he did you know he did the the deadlift German suplex in and out of the ring and did the triangle moon salt onto a you know a bunch of chairs and stuff when with Janela. He and Janela almost killed themselves doing a German suplex onto a door. So like you got all the Ibushi staples. There, there was nothing high for them to dive off of onto each other, unfortunately. Um, which certainly I think when Joey Janela versus Ibushi was announced, that's what I certainly envisioned was like what balcony are these madmen gonna jump off of? But uh, but yeah, you still got all the the Ibushi staples. He still almost died a couple of times and uh, and had a good wrestling match. So we'll uh, we'll see where <laughs> where he comes from next. But yeah, it definitely looked like he was he he looked one hundred percent, but also looked like a guy who hadn't hadn't wrestled in almost two years. 
That's fair. Hall of Fame. Dude, I saw all of the Hall of Fame except Stacey Keebler, Baltimore's greatest export, mm-hmm. in a cruel twist of fate. <laughs> but uh, I thought uh, Hall of Fame was a lot of fun. Thought Conan stole the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, very positive. Did you see any of the Hall of Fame? Yeah, the only stuff I saw was the was Conan and, and a little bit of, of Ray's uh, induction, but I did uh, I did really enjoy enjoy what I saw of, of Conan's speech. Uh, did it feel like I know you didn't you didn't see the whole show with you didn't see Stacy, but did it feel like did people get more time this year? Was it a little less stilted and hit our time cues? Yeah, yeah. I don't. It wasn't like you know tight five minutes for the uh, inductor, mm-hmm. and then uh, you know tight seven or whatever for the inductee. Uh, the main eventers definitely got more time. Um, but it was good. Um, WWE apparently not pleased with Ric Flair's speech to induct the Great Muda, <laughs> where he just uh, he listed a lot of Japanese wrestlers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he kind of just he kind of just named some guys. <laughs> Did, br- brought up his dead son a little bit too. Yeah, who has a weird connection to Muda, as it turns out. But yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I feel like that's what you get if you. <laughs> If you uh, if you leave Rick out there and there's no there's no script for him, he's just gonna he's just gonna ramble. You put him in front of a live microphone in the year of our Lord 2023. What do you expect? Exactly. <laughs> Remember that year the year he inducted Sting, he literally forgot to induct Sting at the end of his speech. <laughs> they started playing Sting music, and he's like, "Thanks, everybody!" And he walks, he starts to walk away, and then he's like, "Oh, oh." Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Sting. Like, like he had to run back to the podium to to remember that he was inducting Sting. I have no memory of this. It was it sounds, sounds wonderful. <laughs> sounds like part of a wonderful variety show. <laughs> um, this Friday on SmackDown, um, Triple H is going to address the WWE Universe. Uh, is it a repeat? Because I, I could have sworn he did that on Monday, too. He uh, he promised the WWE universe that the WWE that they love, quote, is going nowhere. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um, Freudian slip. And uh, this Friday, we'll see what uh, what uh, tri- you called uh, Fritz von Erich heart attack angle, right? Oh, fingers crossed. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> Worth pointing out, Stephanie McMahon was at WrestleMania with uh, no ring on her ring finger. Mm-hmm. Did not sit with Paul at the Hall of Fame. Nope. Paul said Paul was third wheel with uh, Brand- Brandy and Cody. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think Brandy and Paul talk about? Uh, that time Cody <laughs> broke Triple H's throne on an AEW show? <laughs> they probably did bring that up. Um, <laughs> well, they both got kids. Maybe they just talk about their kids. Does Paul see his kids, you think? <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know. I imagine that he lives uh in a condo most <laughs> of the time. Uh yeah. But imagine uh, him not... in an old lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> he does kind of look like an old timey sea captain. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> uh Vince McMahon, by the way. There's a day coming, and it might be very soon, where the sight of Vince McMahon and his uh, caterpillar <laughs> mustache is not going to crack me up. That day has not come yet. <laughs> it's just he's got it, it, like don't also don't undersell the jet black hair he suddenly has. <laughs> like he allowed himself to go gray in like 2003, yeah, and and yet now all of a sudden his hair is jet black and he's got this painted on little pencil mustache his you know we're not going to body shame here but uh as i proceed to body shame but no. um the the vince's eyes <laughs> are very 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 small mm-hmm. and um his his everything from the eyes down the cheeks the chin everything else is just absolutely ginormous <laughs> and then his hair as you mentioned is jet black except for like one patch in one of his side <laughs> sideburns but it looks like he dyed it himself or something because yep. there's like a fingerprint in one of the sideburns 
where like he forgot to or whoever did this <laughs> forgot to to dye it and he it's 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 the most absurd look unhinged uh, um i i don't know i don't know how else to describe this I mean, so people won't notice that he's got a weird old man plastic surgery melty face if, if he's got a mustache and, and mostly black hair <laughs> What is he, 37, 38 years old, Tops? <laughs> I'm recycling my old bit about Mark Calloway's uh, hair coloring, but that's just always what I imagine what someone that age thinks when they're... <laughs> yeah. When they just randomly decide to start coloring their hair this late in the game. Again, yeah. after being on television <laughs> for 15 years with gray hair. Yes. <laughs> yes. And not, uh, not you know, uh, just for a touch of gray. No, mm-hmm. uh, oil slick, <laughs> jet black. <laughs> you got a bottle of shoe polish from a local CVS. Yes. And took a bath in it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. Crazy. <laughs> just crazy. All right. I've taken enough of your time tonight. Is there anything else that uh, you would like to discuss here? No, I think we're uh, we're settling down now. We we made the mistakes of getting our hopes up, and we've been brought back down to earth. So uh, your regularly scheduled programming will resume uh, moving forward. Here, <laughs> there shall be no more optimism towards the booking of Cody Rhodes <laughs> in WWE on this show. I promise. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, so until next time, everybody. I'm Ethan, and I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Various mustachioed celebrities. The more obscure, the better that we can compare Vince to in the coming months. Yeah. The Mad Hatter, Walt Disney. Mm-hmm. There's more. There's more. I don't know. I need to I need to go. I feel like every actor from the 1940s had that mustache. Yes. Is he, is he Errol Flynn or... Uh... Clark Gable, perhaps. I don't know. I don't know what these people look like. I just know the names. I've heard the Earl Flynn uh, comparison okay. already. All right. So so I think you're on the right track there. Good, good. Clark Gable, um, from what I understand, had a mustache. So, yes. Okay. Before- Both of those work. Yeah. I try to keep on keeping on.